chapter 21 of drona parva bhima and radheya duryodhana went back he saw yudhamanyu and uthamaujas duryodhana decided to tackle them he attacked both of them he fought well and managed to hurt the horses of one of them those of uthamaujas but there was no chance of duryodhana's winning against the pair he had to get into the chariot of shalya and leave the brothers the fight was going on between radheya and bhima bhima went wanted to abandon radheya and proceed towards the chariot of arjuna but radheya would not let him go his face was lit up by a charming smile this smile of radheya was making bhima feel discomfited he could not bear it he fought as fearlessly as he could radheya had broken the armor of bhima his fighting was effortless his fingers had such precision and such sure aim it was maddening for bhima he cut the bow of radheya and hurt him on his broad chest radheya got into another chariot since bhima had broken his and went away from the presence of bhima in a few moments he was back again to challenge bhima his smile was gone and he looked very angry the brothers of duryodhana thought that he was sure to kill bhima this time bhima and radheya fought as they had not till now bhima remembered all the sufferings of the pandavas and his mind was bent on killing this friend of his cousin the bows of radheya were broken again and again radheya was wounding bhima without stopping it was a terrible duel duryodhana was watching him he spoke to his brother durjaya he said durjaya go and help radheya that animal is harassing him too much go and destroy him durjaya went there to help radheya he attacked bhima he did not know that the sight of a son of dhritarashtra was the most powerful tonic to the mind of bhima bhima killed him in a matter of moments radheya's eyes rained tears at the death of a brother of the king his chariot was again broken and again he had to take another chariot this was repeated many times radheya stood on the ground and continued to fight duryodhana sent his brother durmuka radheya ascended his chariot bhima ignored radheya and began to fight with durmuka with just nine arrows bhima was able to kill him radheya was horrified to see that the brothers of the king were killed all because they had come to his aid it was making his tears flow continuously for a while radheya felt faint he could do nothing bhima's arrows were breaking up his armor radheya was as angry as a serpent he hurt bhima in the left shoulder the return of these hurts was terrible it was not possible to bear the arrows of bhima radheya had to go away from there he was hurt too much and he was too upset by the killing of the brothers of the king seeing that radheya was made to go away five of the brothers of duryodhana rushed at him they were bent on destroying him durmarshana was one of them bhima smiled to himself as a lion does when a number of deer come within his reach he killed all five of them radheya came back at the sight of the death of so many the fight was now furious between radheya and bhima it was terrible to watch the two trying to destroy each other again radheya lost his chariot and again the foolish king sent some more of his brothers to help radheya radheya had split the armor of bhima bhima covered radheya with his arrows it looked as though he would not be able to emerge out of it radheya's armor had been broken his right arm had been hurt the brothers of the king came and bhima killed all of them the score had mounted up to 49 radheya fainted away at the sight of the death of so many of his friends brothers who had come to help him the fight went on all who looked though all who looked thought they were both like arjuna both were just terrible it made the hearts of arjuna and krishna and satyaki glow with pride to see bhima fight the heroes on both sides were watching the duel bravo excellent well done were the shouts from all the watchers 
ಭೂರಿಶ್ರವಸ್ ದ್ರೋಣ ಕೃಪಾ ಶಲ್ಯ ಸಾತ್ಯಕ್ಕಿ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಯುಧಾಮನ್ಯು ತಂ ಬೌಜಸ್ ರಾಧೆಯ ವಾಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಬೀಚನ್ ದುರ್ಯೋಧನ ಸೆಂಡ್ ಸಮ್ ಮೋರ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಲುಕ್ ಆಸ್ ದೋ ದುರ್ಯೋಧನ ವಾಸ್ ಟ್ರೈಂಗ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟೆಮ್ ದ ಆನ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಟೈಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಸ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಜೂನ್ಸ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ವಾರಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಕಂಪ್ಯಾಸ್ಡ್ ಭೀಮಾ ಬಟ್ ಹಿ ಲಾಫ್ ಡೆಟ್ ದೆಮ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಕ್ರೂಯಲ್ ಸ್ಮೈಲ್ ಆನ್ ಇಸ್ ಲಿಪ್ಸ್ ಭೀಮಾ ಬಿಗ್ಯಾನ್ ಟು ಕಿಲ್ ದೆಮ್ ಒನ್ ಬೈ ಒನ್ ವಿದೌಟ್ ಎನಿ ಕಂಪಂಕ್ಷನ್ ವಿಕರ್ಣ ವಾಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಕಿಲ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ವೆನ್ ಹಿ ಕಿಲ್ಡ್ ವಿಕರ್ಣ ದಟ್ ಭೀಮಾ ವಾಸ್ ಸಾರಿ ಹಿ ಸ್ಪೋಕ್ ಟು ಹಿಮ್ ವಿಕರ್ಣ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಅನ್ ಓನ್ಥ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ವಿಡ್ ಕಿಲ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಸನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದೃತ್ ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಕಿಲ್ ಯು ದೋ ಐ ಡು ನಾಟ್ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಯು ಆರ್ ದ ಒನ್ ರೈಟಿಯಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಕ್ರೌಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಿನ್ನರ್ಸ್ ವೆನ್ ದ್ರೌಪದಿ ವಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಕೋರ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ಸುಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಯುವರ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ರಾಧೆಯ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಯು ಆರ್ ಬೋಲ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಆಫ್ ಟು ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಇನ್ ಹರ್ ಫೇವರ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಬ್ರೇವರ್ ದೆನ್ ಅವರ್ ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಫಾದರ್ ಬಟ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಕಿಲ್ ಯು ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೋರ್ನ್ ಟು ಡೂ ಸೋ ಕಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಾರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕರ್ಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ದ ಫೈಟ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಡ್ ರಾಧೆಯ ವಾಸ್ ಸ್ಲೋಲಿ ಗೇನಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಅಪರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಫ್ಯೂರಿ ಅಗೇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಭೀಮಾ ಮೇಡ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಫೈಟ್ ಮೋರ್ ಫ್ರೂರಸ್ಲಿ ದ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಹಿ ಕೆಟ್ ಆಫ್ he cut off the bow of bima and the reins of his steeds he wounded the charioteer of bima bima hurled a dart at radeya it was cut by radeya bima took up a shield and that was broken too next bima threw his sword at radeya that was cut to pieces the old smile had come back to the face of radeya bima was without a chariot without a bow and without any weapons but he would not leave the field he saw the carcasses of the elephant all around him he began to throw one by one at radeya he threw the shattered fragments of the many chariots and anything that was within his reach served as a weapon they were all futile radeya had him at his mercy he could have killed him but he remembered his promise to his mother kunti that he would not kill any of her sons except arjuna so radeya decided to let him go unharmed but he would insult him radeya came near bima he touched him with the tip of his bow and said you are a fool and a glutton do not try to fight with the heroes like me you should either stay in the kitchen as you did in the palace of virata or you must spend your days and years in the forest trying to collect roots and fruits you are still a child go home my child krishna saw this he said arjuna look look at the state of bima radeya has defeated him and now he is taunting him with his cruel words arjuna's chariot came near bima the arrows of arjuna began to harass radeya but radeya turned his face away from him and went away from the presence of bima krishna knew that he was trying to hide his emotions from everyone arjuna returned to his place in front of the team which was guarding jayadratha Bhima got into the chariot of Satyaki and followed Arjuna. Arjuna was not prepared to let Radheya go so easily. He sent some arrows towards Radheya. These were intercepted by Ashwatthama. Arjuna turned his attention to the son of his guru. Shri Krishna Pranamast. Chapter 22 of Dronaparva bhurish shravas satyaki had managed to reach the front he had performed a great task he had today destroyed the kaurava army and he had come in time to help arjuna he was surrounded by a huge army headed by dushasana the fighting of satyaki was a pleasure to watch he looked as though he was dancing in his chariot he stood where he was but his arrows were flying in all the four directions He crossed the entire army and advanced towards Arjuna. Krishna was the first to see him. He said, "Arjuna, your pupil Satyaki has come to you. He has crossed this entire army and reached you. You are very dear to Satyaki. You are dearer to him than his very life. He has baffled Drona and Kritavarma. Having performed tasks which sound incredible, Satyaki has at last come to your help." Arjuna was taken back at the sight of Satyaki. his thoughts flew to yudhishthira he did not know what was happening to him he said 
Krishna, I am not very pleased at the coming of Satyaki. It is hard to think that Yudhishthira is safe without Satyaki. I had asked him to be by the side of my brother. Krishna said, Can you not see why he has come? Your brother must have been worried about you. He must have been worried about your safety. He thought that something must have happened to you. He has therefore sent Satyaki to find out how you are and to help you. Whatever the reason may be, I for one do not feel sorry at the sight of Satyaki. I am glad to see him. While they were talking thus, Arjuna said, Look, Krishna, Bhurishravas is going towards Satyaki to challenge him to a duel. Bhurishravas is entrusted with the guarding of Jayadrata. He was to stop Satyaki from reaching me. I have got to protect Satyaki from him. It is also evident that the sun is fast proceeding towards the west. Jayadrata has got to be killed in a short time. Satyaki looks very tired. He is exhausted. His charioteer and his horses too look very tired. Poor Satyaki, in his affection for the Pandavas, has been gambling with his life. How can I repay his love for me? Krishna saw the tears in his eyes and was pleased with them. Arjuna was still talking. He said, I can see that Bhurishravas is anything but tired. But Satyaki is exhausted. But he has got to win this duel. I am angry with my brother for having exposed my friend to this danger. They were watching the duel between Satyaki and Bhurishravas and all the while Arjuna was fighting his own battle. Bhurishravas had come and stood in front of the chariot of Satyaki. He said, Now I have got a chance to fight with you. I have been wanting to fight this duel for a very long time. Unless you run away from the battlefield, you cannot escape me with life. I will today avenge the insult offered by your grandfather, Sini, to my father. Today, you will see all your forefathers. Get ready to fight. Satyaki said, Please do not be too sure of yourself. Remember, you are talking to Satyaki and not just anybody. I am sure you are eager to fight with me and so am I. I too remember the ancient feud between your father and my grandfather. Let us fight. I do not believe in wasting time in idle words like the autumn clouds which roars so much but never gives water. There was an ancient feud between the two families. Sura, the father of Vasudeva, had a cousin named Sini. He was a very great hero. There was Swayamvara held for Devaki, the sister of Kamsa. Sini went to that Swayamvara and carried away Devaki to make her the bride of Vasudeva. There was a powerful king of the Kuru house called Somadatta. He resented the act of Sini. Somadatta was the son of Bahlika and the father of Burishravas and Sala. He came to Sini and challenged him to fight. Sini gained the upper hand and in his great joy, he caught Somadatta by the hair and placed his foot on his chest. This was a great insult to Somadatta he being a son of the Kuru house. He prayed to God and obtained a boon that his son would do the same thing to one of the descendants of Sini. Now Bhurishravas was the son of Somadatta and Satyaki was the grandson of Sini. This was the ancient feud they were talking about. Incidentally, Krishna was the grandson of Sura. He was the son of Vasudeva. Arjuna was the grandson also or Sura. Sini's Yikunti was the daughter of Sura. The fight began. Bhurishravas was a famous warrior. He had been a great devotee too. He commanded the respect of everyone on either side. He advanced towards Satyaki. They both fought furiously. Each had killed the other's horses. The charioteers were the next to go. Both were now without chariots. They were on the ground engaged in a duel with swords. It had has a terrible sight. Arjuna and Krishna were watching them. They knew that Satyaki was just worn out by the day's work. His energy was at its lowest ebb. Still he fought on. Krishna said, My body is burning at the sight of Satyaki. He came all this distance for your sake. He had to undergo so many hardships. He has lost all the energy he had. Bhurishravas is slowly and steadily gaining the upper hand. This is an unfair fight. 
they are not equally matched even as he was saying it burish travers had hit a powerful blow at satyak it made him fall on the ground with his senses reeling he had lost his consciousness burish travers advanced towards the fallen hero and taking satyak's hair in his left hand he placed his foot on his chest there was terrible shouting in the ranks when they saw this outrage on a fallen opponent krishna saw this he said arjuna it is a it is dreadful to see satyaki in the hands of this man satyaki is tired he is on the ground with his senses out of his control burishravas is doing a wrong thing in insulting him like this it is time you interfere and do something to prevent this insult to your friend arjuna said he is just dragging him by the hair he is not trying to kill him burishravas is a fair fighter he had to do this because of their enmity now he has done what he had sworn to do he will leave satyaki he will not kill him just then they could see burish travers take the sword in his right hand and they saw that he was trying to cut the head of satyaki who was unconscious arjuna said i am harassed by everyone on all sides i will protect satyaki from burish travers my mind does not like to interfere in a duel fought between others I have to protect Satyaki who has done so much for me. I do not know what I have to do now. Krishna turned a horrified look at Burishravas and the act which he was about to perform. He said, "Poor Satyaki is certain to be killed today. Now at this very moment by Burishravas who is bent on avenging the wrong done to his father by the grandfather of Satyaki. I am not pleased with his action. Harassing a tired man who has fainted and killing him then is not fair fighting arjuna realized that he had to interfere burishravas was holding the hair of satyaki in his left hand and his right hand which held the sword was held aloft with its descent satyaki's life would have been ended arjuna took a sharp arrow and shot it at burishravas he cut off the right hand of burishravas it fell on the ground burishravas was furious with arjuna he said arjuna you have today done a shameful thing it is not right you have attacked a man who was not prepared for your attack how can you face yudhishthira today he is a righteous man i am sure he will not approve of what you have done born in the noble house of the kurus you have today done something that will bring disgrace to all of you i am sure that you by yourself are not capable of so much meanness I am sure that it is that charioteer of yours who has given you this advice only a son of the house of rishnis will stoop to this arjuna became very angry he said please do not speak ill of krishna he is my lord and master as for this interference of mine i i tried for a long time not to come between you and satyaki even after knowing that the fight was not fair but you are trying to kill my friend he has done so much for me he was about to be killed when he was not in a position to defend himself do you think that i am such a heartless man as to sit and watch my friend being killed without lifting up a little finger for him all these days in the war several duels have been fought the moment one became weak others have rushed to his help it is but right that one should think of others too and how can i watch my friend my dependent my disciple my dear satyaki being killed by you when he has not the strength to defend himself i believe that all who fight all who fight for me have a right to be defended by me it has been my rule if i had just looked on and allowed the killing of satyaki sin would have clung to me but not now you attacked satyaki knowing that he was not in a fit condition to fight i could have cut your head off for this act of yours you talk to me of dharma you who stood by and watched while my abhimanyu charioteless weaponless without his bow without any defense was killed cruelly by all the great kaurava heroes where did your righteousness go then did you say that it was unfair no did you talk to your worthless nephews that they were doing something that was against the dharma of a kshatriya no you stood by and watched while that child was being murdered i suppose you expect such a behavior from me that i would stand by and watch my friend being killed by unfair means 
I do not think that I was wrong in interfering. It, it was been my rule, it has been my rule, which I have tried to follow that I will always take care of all those who fight for me. I had to protect Satyaki if I have to be true to my principle. No one spoke a word. Arjuna was overcome with pity for Bhurishtravas. He said, My Lord, I am sorry I have been born a Kshatriya. I had to do this to you, one of the noblest of the sons of the Kuru house. I do not curse myself for this condition of yours. I curse Duryodhana for the sin of making you reach this end. Bhurishtravas listened to it all and bent his head down to the ground. He lifted up his other hand and acknowledged the words of Arjuna. He had no more wish to leave. He spread Kusha grass on the ground and sat on it, prepared to abandon his body by yoga. The army was breathlessly watching the immense drama that was being enacted. The great Burish Travers had renounced the world and had decided to die. When all eyes were turned in his direction, Satyaki woke up from his faint. He jumped up. He caught up his sword in his hand and rushed towards Burish Travers with the intention of killing him. There was a great consternation at the sight of this. Arjuna and Krishna turned horrified eyes in his direction. They tried to stop him, but he did not heed them. He rushed towards the form of Burishravas and cut off his head. Burishravas had turned his mind away from the war and he was killed by Satyaki. He was defenseless. He had lost one arm and he was sitting with his mind fixed on the other world. And in that state he was killed by Satyaki, the greatest of the heroes on the side of Pandavas. It was an unfortunate incident in the life of Satyaki, a life that was otherwise blameless. Shri Krishna Panamasta Chapter 23 of Dronaparra The Death of Jayadratha Arjuna was very angry with Satyaki, but he did not say a word. Satyaki turned on all of them with a defiant look. He said, All of you think that I have done a wrong thing. I do not think so. You all shout, it's not fair. He must not have been killed when he was defenseless. I see that it is easy to teach Dharma to others. Yesterday when the child said, Come one by one, I will fight with you. You never listened to him. Your righteousness had gone into eclipse then perhaps. When Radeya cut his bow from behind him, where was your righteousness? The great commander of the Kaurava army was the man who trapped Abhimanyu into the Vyuha and he was the man who taught all of you the method of killing Abhimanyu. You never thought of righteousness then. Not one of you has any right to talk about Dharma. As for my killing Bhurishravas, it may look as though I have done something wrong. I do not think I did. I have taken an oath too that I would kill the man who insults me. This man insulted me by placing his foot on my chest. Arjuna in his affection for me and with a desire to do what he was always sworn to do, cut off the hand of Burishtravas and robbed me of my glory. I have done just what I had sworn to do. Burishtravas insulted me and he tried to kill me when I was unconscious. That does not seem like a dharma to you. But my action looks wrong. I have done nothing wrong in killing a man who insulted me. The devas, the devas who had assembled in the sky to watch the course of the dreadful war spoke. There is no blame attached to Satyaki in this. It has been ordained that this had to be the way of it. No one should blame Satyaki. The gods have said that Bhurishravas is to be killed only by Satyaki. What he did is not wrong. No one spoke after that. In his heart of hearts, Arjuna did not approve the action of Satyaki. But it was no use trying to say anything about it. Bhurishravas had been killed and there the matter ended. He had to think of something more important. The killing of Jayadrata. Arjuna said, Krishna, it is get, getting late. We must hurry. Let us go near our victim. We have to hurry up. Krishna went fast towards the spot where Jayadrata was stationed in the midst of all the heroes of the Kaurava army. The others on the side of the Kauravas hurried to the spot. Duryodhana, Radeya, Vrisha, Sena, Ashwatthama, Kripa, all of them were there. They wanted to stop the progress of Arjuna and prevent him from meeting Jayadrata in a duel. 
Arjuna was now exactly in front of Jayadratha. He could see him. Arjuna looked at Jayadratha. His eyes crimson with wrath. Radheya came to Satyaki to engage him in a duel so that he might not be near Arjuna. Arjuna said, Krishna, look at the courage of Radheya. He has just seen Bhurishrava's killed and yet he thinks he can fight with Satyaki. I do not want Radheya to be killed by Satyaki. I want to kill him myself. Take me to Radheya. Krishna did not want a duel between Arjuna and Radheya. He was afraid of the Shakti which had been given to Radheya by Indra. So he said, It is no matter, Arjuna. Let him fight with Satyaki. I will think of taking you to Radheya later. Actually, we have no time for that now. The sun will set in no time. Think of all those men around Jayadratha. You have to cross all of them before you can get at Jayadratha. Let us not worry about Radheya now. Satyaki was without a chariot and without any weapon except the sword with which he had killed Bhurishravas. The chariot of Arjuna was about to proceed further. Krishna blew the Rishabha note on his Panchajanya. In no time, the chariot of Krishna with its eagle banner came into sight. Satyaki smiled his thanks and got into the chariot to fight with Radheya. The fight was wonderful. The skill of Dharuka in driving the chariot won the admiration of everyone there, even that of Krishna. The warriors on the side of the Kauravas had to come to the assistance of Radheya. They all surrounded Satyaki. Radheya had lost his chariot and he ascended that of Duryodhana. Dushasana and the rest of them were all defeated by Satyaki. They were at his mercy. But once again Satyaki remembered the oath of Bhima and allowed them to escape with their lives. The opinion on the battlefield that day was that only one could equal Krishna and Arjuna. And that was the great Satyaki. There was no fourth. This was said by Ashwatthama and Kritavarma and others. Arjuna went to the presence of Radheya and said, You killed my son when I was not there. Very soon under your very eyes, I am going to kill your son Vrishasena. Let me see if you will be able to save him. The sun's rays had lost their intensity. He was almost setting. Duryodhana spoke frenetically to Radheya. The sun has almost set. If you accost Arjuna now, he will not be able to keep his oath. We must save Jayadratha. You are the one person who can do it. Even as they were conferring, Arjuna had advanced further into the viewer. There was no time for any duel. All the Kauravas defended Jayadrata, Duryodhana, Radeya, Vrishasena, Shalya, Shwatthama were the heroes who assaulted Arjuna. Jayadrata had to join them now. The sun had begun to take on a reddish hue. Arjuna fought as he had never fought before. It was a very hard task for him to fight with all of them together. Arjuna was using his astras. The fight was general. Bhima with Satyaki was helping Arjuna and the three of them were fighting the immense army and the heroes on the other side. With the help of his sastras, Arjuna was able to come very near Jayadrata after destroying the army which surrounded him. He began to harass Jayadrata now. Now that his death was so near, Jayadrata fought very bravely. It was not easy for Arjuna to defeat him easily. He was a great fighter and he was fighting for time. If only they could prevent Arjuna for a few moments from coming near enough to kill Jayadratha, there would be no more need to fight any more. The sun would set and Arjuna would fall into the fire and kill himself as he said he would. With the death of Arjuna, the end of the Pandavas was imminent. This was the thought that was present in the minds of all of them as they fought with Arjuna. Krishna realized that it would not be possible for Arjuna to kill Jayadrata before sunset. He spoke to Arjuna. Arjuna, I am afraid it will not be possible for you to kill Jayadrata before sunset. It is terrible. But the fact is the sun will set in a few moments. I will have to use my yoga and do something. Arjuna, do not worry. Listen to me and obey me implicitly. When I say shoot, you must shoot your great astra at Jayadrata. Krishna thought of his chakra. He made it cover the disk of the sun. Darkness descended suddenly on them like a curtain. Arjuna was unhappy. But there was great excitement in the Kaurava camp. 
all of them lifted up their eyes and they were looking at the sun which had sucked set so suddenly to save the life of jayadratha with a smile of triumph mingled with happiness and relief jayadratha raised his head to look at the sun which could not be seen krishna said arjuna look jayadratha has lifted up his head to look at the sky he is off his guard shoot arjuna took up his precious astra the pashupata which he had been worshiping all these years and he shot this at jayadratha it cut his neck and severed his head from his body before it could fall on the ground krishna said arjuna make your astra take the head to the father of jayadratha and place it on his lap i will tell you the reason later arjuna did as he was told the kaurava army saw the head of jayadratha being borne in the sky by the arrow the head was placed on the lap of the father of the dead man who was performing his evening prayers near samanta panchaka when his prayers were over he got up the head of jayadratha rolled on the ground the head of the father of jayadratha split into a thousand fragments the moment jayadratha died the darkness lifted and the sun shone in all his glory for a few moments as though he wanted to prove to all that he had not set the sun then disappeared beyond the western hill the kauravas were sunk in gloom they were so sure that they could avert the tragedy and they could not jai shri kannadampe shri krishna arpanavastu